All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our first Zoom with the coach. Call it Coach's Corner, and uh, our leadoff today, as it may be, is baseball. And we're joined today by the head coach of the West Texas A&M Buffaloes, Matt Vanderberg. Just a little background. The Buffs this year were at 17-6. and They were a perfect 11-0 at Wilder Park this season. They handed then top-ranked Angelo State their first loss of the season. Coach Vanderberg's in his 12th year with the Buffaloes. He is the program's all-time wins leader, has a record of 375 wins against 223 losses. That is a 62% winning percentage. Under his guidance, the Buffs have produced nine All-Americans, 57 All-Lone Star Conference selections. His program has won three of the last four Lone Star Conference tournaments, and they have made six consecutive NCAA tournament appearances. Good morning, Coach, and uh, welcome. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you all for coming out uh, to this Zoom meeting. Uh, obviously, it's the first one of all the head coaches, and I'm excited to get it started with this. Well, we're going to start out playing a game of what if or um, what's going on in the world of baseball right now. Looking at the schedule, you're supposed to be in Edmond, Oklahoma right now, getting ready for a four-game series with Oklahoma Christian. Obviously, that's not the case, but uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on with the baseball program. You've still got a team to manage, even though they're scattered all over the country. Yeah, as with every team around the country, man, it's a tough time. It really is right now, and it was it was a really tough weekend. I guess it was March 11th, March 12th, come around in there. Uh, we were down at UT Tyler, and, and that was a tough day. Uh, it really was, And uh, but, you know, Moving on from there, um, you know, we told all of our guys to follow all the leadership, um, you know, what they're telling us to do. Uh, a lot of our guys have went home. Uh, they're doing all their classes online. Um, probably about 15 or 20 of them are still around campus, still doing what they can. Um, you know, we're still able to do a little bit um, in smaller groups. Uh, well, we aren't, but Coach Ramey, um, they're working with Coach Ramey on the football field in groups of six or smaller. So you know, mainly just to get them out there doing boot camp type workouts. Uh, it's really good for their, I think, their psyche at this point in time. You know, we try to give them a call at least once a week, talk with them a little bit, uh, make sure they're doing okay, make sure they're doing all their uh, coursework, all that kind of stuff, because we still got to be student athletes. Uh, we still got to get ready to go for another year next year and uh, hopefully put all this up behind us and be better and better at the end. Now, you mentioned uh, reaching out to your student athletes, both the ones here on campus and the ones at home. That's a pretty big process. Tell us a little bit about what you and coaches Hall and Neil are doing to stay in contact with your team. Keep them in shape. Yeah, so, you know, we've decided we kind of split our team up into thirds. There's obviously three of us coaches. Uh, we call, well, I think it's about 12 or 13 guys apiece every week just to kind of go over all their academics with them, make sure they're doing okay in all their classes, and then just kind of reaching out to them and see if they have any questions, see how everything's going, uh, make sure they're staying healthy, uh, make sure the families are staying healthy, mainly just for my own thing as well. Man, I, it, it's tough just sitting around the house all the time. Um, I'm a, I like doing flowers, stuff like that, so I'm out in my garden all the dang time. It's, it's going to be as nice as it's ever been. All right, we'll uh, take questions from Buff Nation that's logged in. Our ground rules are pretty simple. We ask that you keep your microphones muted when you're uh, watching or listening. If you have a question, just give us a wave. We'll make the call to the bullpen. I'll uh, call your name, and then you can fire off a question for Coach V. Who wants to step up in the batter's box first? <laughs> All right, while we're uh, waiting, I know people have questions for you, Matt, but um, let's just continue forward. One positive, if we can call it that, that we can take from this uh, stoppage in play is uh, we've been able to undertake some uh, maintenance and uh, refurbishing out at Walter Park. Why don't you tell our uh, fans a little bit about what's going on out there right now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really excited. It was supposed to be this summer. Uh, we're we're returfing our infield. Uh, you know, while the park is 10, I believe this was a 10th season um, and you know the infield was starting to get a little bit worn down uh, so um, you know luckily we were, were coming in and replacing that infield and then also tore out our all dirt mound uh, a lot of our pitchers are not real happy with this right now but uh, decided to go with uh, turf on the mound as well so they just got done 
concreting it yesterday and they'll put the turf in hopefully in the next week or so. So we're really excited about it. Just as a maintenance standpoint, it's so much easier. Uh, and a lot of the big programs, I mean, Vanderbilt, uh, Louisville, all those schools have went to the all turf mound. Just makes it so much easier. We found um, having that clay, it doesn't matter how much you can pick, try to get the dirt out of that clay, all that stuff, it's just going to set in there. And really a couple years ago when we uh, hosted the LSC conference tournament, we had some rain and the umpires just thought, you know, and, and it's part of it. The, the great thing about playing on turf is you can play through some rain and stuff, but that mound, it gets slippery, it gets nasty, and then all that that mud gets into that clay. It's impossible to get it out. So moving on to all turf will be really nice. I'm excited about it. Some of our pitchers right now, especially our returning guys uh, for this upcoming year, are not going to be real happy. But uh, the you know the rumor is once you get used to throwing on it, I mean they they will end up loving it. I mean there's never any holes, never anything like that. So uh, I really think it'll be a benefit for us moving forward. And regarding that mound, Coach, as we were looking at what to do with the mound, you have mentioned that um, there are quite a few high schools and junior colleges now that have a turf mound. So this isn't uh, an off-the-wall thing that we're doing. No, it's really not. And really, honestly, and that's what I've told our guys, I mean, they throw our bullpen mounds, both our bullpen mounds are turf. Uh, they're used to that. We throw on turf mounds inside. It's really nothing big. We played on turf mounds. Uh, you know, CSU Pueblo has a turf mound. New Mexico Highlands uh, has a turf mound. So there are turf mounds around the region, especially around the country. It's kind of like um, when everybody started going to turf, whatever it's been 15, 20 years ago, everybody thought it was going to be a lot different um, until they started playing on it. And it's really not a lot of different. It's going to be the same thing with all of our pitchers. It'll take a little bit for them to get used to. But once they do, they'll end up loving it, uh, just like our guys love playing on turf every day. Uh, when they're at home. I mean, there's no maintenance to it. It's going to be a really nice addition. And again, we're open for questions from Buff Nation. Just uh, raise your hand and we'll go to you. Also, as Casey just posted, if you want to uh, type your question, I can pose it for Coach as well. And it looks like uh, we've got a question there. Is that... Uh, this is Gary. Gary, you bet. Have at it. Hey, Matt. I hate to see the season over. In fact, I was in Tyler when it ended. But uh, anyway, I got a question. What about your, your seniors with the NCAA changing the rule and your incoming freshmen? That's a good question, Gary. I appreciate it. Um, you know, we're very fortunate that the NCAA came out with a ruling that uh, seniors can have their year back. But, uh, you know, that Tyler weekend was probably one of the toughest weekends I've ever had to deal with in my coaching career. Um, I've been coaching now for 17, 18 years. I'm getting old. Uh, now, it was tough. You know, we kind of knew what was coming down. We kind of saw the Thunder game the night before uh, get canceled. Uh, it was tough. And, you know, the, the whole next day we kept seeing all these things getting canceled, getting canceled. I was in contact with our athletic director. Uh, you know, so we kind of pro- we knew that it was – it's going to be a tough weekend. Um, you know, we didn't know if we were going to get the weekend in. And I got the call uh, from, our, from our athletic director about 30 minutes prior to the start of the game saying this would be our last game. Um, so, you know, as I talked to my coaching staff and, you know, I don't I don't know for sure. I don't think UT Tyler told their guys until after the uh, game. Uh, we, we decided to tell our guys uh, right away. I didn't want to lie to them. They knew something was kind of going on. Uh, they had heard rumors that the NCAA had already came out and canceled championships. So telling those guys and looking in those seniors' eyes uh, was one of the most difficult things. I mean, you, always at the end of the year, it's always tough uh, dealing with your seniors and seeing them, uh, you know, how emotional they can get at the end of a season. But in the middle of your season, uh, to get that call and know that this was going to be their last game, it was something I've never experienced before. It was very difficult. Um, our seniors were great. Um, they handled it great. Um, you know, and then afterwards, you know, a few weeks later, um, NCAA came out, and I think they made the right decision and gave them that year back. Um, right now, we had 16 seniors uh, this past year. A ton of – I mean, that's why I love this team so much. I mean, we had great senior leadership. Guys like, you know, Kate Ingles, Tony Given. I mean, our pitching staff, Zach Dixon, uh, Darius Carter. I mean, it just it was an unbelievable group of seniors. Uh, and the NCAA gave them that year back. And, you know, we're fortunate uh, out of the 16 guys, 13 of them right now 
have said they're going to come back. Now, obviously, anything can change. I hope it doesn't. Um, you know, but three of those guys, um, they all three had graduated already, um, kind of had jobs waiting on them and everything. And I, I told all three of them, man, it, it'd be hard for me to come back. Uh, you know, so I, I completely understand their decision. It's tough because I don't want to lose any of them. Uh, but I'm really excited that at least 13 of those 16 guys are coming back. Um, you know, I'm pr- I think we're primed for a huge year next year. Uh, the positive about this whole thing is we were kind of, I mean, 23 games in, we were kind of able to see our strengths and weaknesses. Um, you know, so with us knowing who's coming back next year, we're able to go in and and get, uh, you know, those guys that we feel like can fill in and make us a better team in 2021. Matt, you just mentioned strengths and weaknesses. What did you perceive to be the strengths of your uh, Buffalo club this year? You know, really, our, our starting pitching uh, for the last, five, six, seven years has been just really good. And I thought we had some unbelievable starters this year. I mean, Zach Dixon, obviously, was LSC preseason of the year and was having another phenomenal year. Uh, Matthew Gutierrez uh, did an outstanding job. And then guys like Todd Van Zyzen and uh, Chan McGee, man, uh, two seniors that have been in the program uh, and really didn't get a lot of innings last year. Uh, Todd's been here for a couple of years and really hadn't pitched a lot for us and just worked his way into being a really good pitcher. I mean, he's been unbelievable. Uh, same thing with Chandler Dean. Uh, you know, I'm really excited. I mean, realistically, all, all four of those guys will be back. Uh, we'll have all of our, our starters back on the mound. So, obviously, I mean, our, our strength, I hope, I, if not, Coach Hall is going to be in a lot of trouble. We'll always be our starters. Uh, we put a lot of money into our pitching. Uh, obviously, some of our weaknesses um, – you know, we wasn't great in our bullpen. Uh, losing Dom a year ago for the last four years was tough. Uh, but I thought that uh, Carter Brown, some other guys, Garrett Cobb, a local kid here, uh, was really, uh, you know, I mean, Garrett didn't throw any in the fall. So I know we, we knew he was kind of going to kind of be behind a little bit. I think as the year went on, those guys would have settled in and done a phenomenal job out of our bullpen as well. While you're talking about pitchers, I know a, a, a stoppage in play – um, is, is always serious business. How do you uh, go about keeping a pitcher's arm ready, knowing that you won't have competition really until your fall season in September? Well, it's different um, for every one of our guys. I mean, some of the guys, you know, Matthew Gutierrez, I mean, he's thrown a ton, uh, even this past summer into the fall and then early this spring. He needs to take a couple months off. I think uh, some of the problems with youth baseball and all that kind of stuff is how much we throw guys. Um, So really, I I mean, Coach Hall does a phenomenal job with our pitching staff. Uh, The first thing we told those guys is, listen, take two months off, and then we'll start putting them back onto a throwing program. Some of our guys that didn't get to throw a lot, if there is summer league, which I think is a a very big gift right now, uh, we will place in different summer leagues around the country and um, try to get them some innings as well. But for the most part, we just uh, coach all, send them out of throwing program, making sure they're throwing long toss. Uh, but it's really difficult right now. I mean, even uh, to throw, I mean, you know, especially, you know, moving the ball from one person to the next and everything. I don't know how uh, the corona, I'm not a doctor by any means, but I don't know how it's spread or anything. So we got to tell them, uh, you know, be smart with what you're doing there as well. Okay, questions for Coach Vanderberg. We've got uh, a text question for you, Matt. I think it may be a little tongue in cheek. It comes from Scott Doors, and he's wondering what it was like playing ball in Alpha, Oklahoma. Oh, I loved it. Uh, and what a great time it was. I had a great coach there, Coach Phillips. Joe Phillips did a phenomenal job, taught me a lot. Uh, you know, he was definitely a player's coach. I tell everybody, uh, you know, when I first got into coaching, I thought I was going to be a completely different type of coach than what I am today. And a lot of that is because of Coach Phillips. But, uh, small town. My first year, I went there straight out of high school and uh, lived in the dorms there for four years. And it's, I mean, the dorm rooms, cinder block walls, all that kind of stuff. After the first semester, I was telling my parents, I came from pretty much Oklahoma City here. I'm from Norman. And I was like, man, I cannot do this. This is horrible. My, thank goodness my parents were tough on me back then. Uh, they pretty much said, you're, you're at least sticking it out the year. You gave a commitment to them. You're going to stay there for the year. And uh, spring came along, baseball came along, absolutely loved it. Uh, it was the best four years of my life. Questions for Coach Vanderberg? 
There we go. I'm going to ask another one. Yeah. Hey, Matt, I know it was a uh, sort of a challenge for you this year because you didn't have any non-conference games. You went straight into conference right off that. Speak to us. How's that affect you? I know you gives you didn't give you much chance to look at guys before you really got into the thick of things. Yeah, it's tough. It, it really was. It was a lot more difficult than what I thought it would be. I thought it, you know, really, I mean, for the last six years, we've made a, a regional and uh, those games before our conference are just as important every other year as the conference games, if not more important. They cover more boxes and stuff like that. So um, I really didn't think it would be that difficult, but it really was. Um, it was, I mean, if you, and you kind of see that uh, with our lineups and our pitching staff, all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, you know, in the fall, we're only allowed 15 hours a week. Uh, it's just not enough time, in my opinion, uh, to see exactly what you've got. Um, so, really early on, we threw a bunch of lineups out there. We tried to get as many guys in there as possible and stuff. But you got to know, I mean, every game um, is a conference game, and you don't want to fall behind. And, and it didn't help. I didn't think that when the start of our season was – hard. I mean, it was really difficult, I, I, and I knew it was going to be. I mean, we had teams, St. Mary, Angelo State, obviously, uh, St. Edwards, Texas A&M, Kingsville. Those are all typically uh, the top teams in the region, and uh, we had them. We had them all out of the way. Um, it would have been nice to finish the schedule and stuff, but, um, you know, it was a tough schedule early on, um, you know, so it was definitely different. Matt, follow up on that with the expanded Lone Star Conference taking in those Heartland teams. You mentioned St. Ed's and St. Mary's. They're just two of them. But talk about uh, how that's affected the Lone Star Conference in baseball. I think it's good. I really do. Um, a lot of people don't like the big conference. But as a baseball standpoint, it is so nice to be able to call a recruit and say, listen, we play in the best conference in the country. Um, the LSC now is – it's dominant in baseball and, uh, you know, teams like, you know, obviously us, Angelo State, who is number one team in the country for a lot of the year, uh, St. Mary, St. Edward, Texas A&M, Kingsville, uh, even Fort Smith, and then UT Tyler, who obviously we lost that last game to. I mean, they're, they've got unbelievable facilities, uh, great location there. They're going to be a really good team, and they, they've moved up from Division three. It's just so nice to be able to sell a recruit and stuff because – Baseball players want to play against the best competition, and that's what we're able to sell uh, to these recruits. Is uh, I mean, our, our our conference will go out and compete with most mid major Division One. Um, they really will. I mean, heck, I mean, you look at our rotation. I mean, we had a, uh, you know Arizona State transfer and North Carolina State transfer, and then out of our bullpen, I mean, we've got a couple other major Division One pitchers and stuff. So I mean, it's it's one of those things where the LSC it, it's great baseball every weekend. Um, you know, you, you've got to come ready to go. Any questions for Coach Vandenberg? Go ahead, Gary. Recruits, uh, you, you know, you've got, uh, what, 13 seniors are going to come back, and you've got recruits, JUCOs and freshmen coming in. What about recruits and how you're handling all that, and what do you think of recruits? Well, we can't uh, – the guys we've signed, we, we really like. Uh, we're in talks with a lot of recruits. Um, Obviously, can't name any names, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, we really like our group. But what this has showed us that really, got, I mean, it, it kind of changed our recruiting. I mean, Coach Hall and Coach Neal and myself spent a lot of hours sitting down going, okay, well, this, I mean, because all year long, we've been focused on what we our needs were to replace those 16 seniors, and that drastically changed. Um, we really don't need a lot right now. I mean, you look at it, I mean, we returned – Almost, I mean, besides, you know, Darius, uh, we, we return almost every one of our starters. Tanner Cheese is another guy that's not come back, and uh, he started some for us at second. So we really don't need a lot there, um, you know, but we have – we already had signed, I think, four or five guys, and then, you know, we're in talks with uh, some really good arms. Uh, that's kind of the biggest thing that we're looking for right now is just a couple really good arms to solidify the back end of our – or the back end of our uh, pitching staff. And, Coach, you're talking about recruiting. That's got to be a challenge now because the kids you're recruiting aren't able to play as well. Yeah, and not to mention you, we can't get on the road uh, and go talk to these kids. Uh, they can't come in here and see our campus. We have a gorgeous okay. campus, obviously one of the nicest facilities in Division II. So it makes it difficult. Uh, we are fortunate that we can still call recruits. But uh, it's a tough time right now. It really is. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get back on the road soon uh, and get some recruits here on campus. Uh, 
you know, the Panhandle area is such a great place. That is one of the biggest things I think that we have a lot of success with, with is being able to get the recruits here to the Panhandle, take them out to dinner, uh, show them around town, and just get them to meet all the people around here. They fall in love with them. You get these kids from California, New York, uh, even Houston, all those areas, and, and they're just like, man, they've never seen people uh, that are so nice. And I think that's one of the biggest selling points uh, to getting guys here. You know, one of the legacies of a successful program, and I mentioned the accolades or some of the accolades when we introduced you, is having players play professionally after their days at WT are gone. And you have uh, three players currently, I'll say playing professionally right now, even though there's a stoppage. Uh, Dom Yariego with the A's, uh, Joe Corbett with the Ranger organization, and Marshall Kozowski in the Dodgers organization. What can you tell us about those young men? Man, I, you know, I talk to them all the time. Uh, Dom and Joe are still here. I mean, again, it goes back to this area. I mean, it, and they're off season. They've been here working out with us, uh, working with Coach Ramey as well, throwing. Uh, they just love the area. I mean, Joe's a Division One transfer um, that went to Arkansas. Little Rock pitched a lot for them, transferred in here, and fell in love with the place. Dom was a guy that was here for five years and was 78 to 82 when he first got here. And by the time he left, he's uh, signed with the Oakland A's, uh, you know, and then Marshall Kozowski is another. He's just a one-year guy, but probably one of the most dominant Division II pitchers I've ever uh, been a part of. I mean, he's really good, and, uh, you know, we've had a lot of those guys. I mean, Dylan James with the Houston Astros, Austin Moore, uh, you know, Josh Payne. Uh, we've been very fortunate uh, to get these guys here, and what we sell to recruits is all those guys, a lot of those guys went to major Division ones, University of Houston, Arkansas, Little Rock, schools like that, never got drafted, uh, not one time before they came to WT. Uh, they, they came to WT, and I, I don't like to uh, toot Coach Hall's horn too much, uh, but I will. I mean, you know, none of those guys were drafted. He did an outstanding job with them. Um, they came here to WT, and they got drafted, and they're doing great in pro ball. I mean, Marshall's already up in the double A. He actually was in big league spring training. Uh, with the, the Dodgers, um, I think hopefully they end up having a seat. He actually texted me yesterday or the day before, um, said that they're looking at getting back at it middle of May or something like that, and he's hoping they're going to start up around June. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if you see him on TV with the uh, Dodgers, you know, their, their major league team. This year. That would be exciting to see. Any questions for Coach Vanderberg? Okay, Gary. Uh, Matt, are you getting any pointers from Joe Ray Halsey? Always. Uh, I love Joe Ray Halsey. He's one of um, my best friends and absolutely love the guy. Uh, we text a lot after every weekend, um, you know, especially if we sweep or something. He'll always have something funny to say. I wish he was still in our dugout with us. And he keeps saying he's going to come back up here and help us coach. We need some help. So I know you're friends with him. Make sure to talk him in. Uh, to coming back up here. We'd love to get him and his wife up here and uh, get him in our dugout every day with us. Scott? I think you're on mute. Do you have a question, Scott? Go ahead. Yeah, um, I got a follow-up to Gary's question. Do you ever get any advice from a fellow Northwestern alumni, Mike Hargrove? Does he ever give you any advice? You know, I, I, I haven't. Um, I didn't know Mike too well, um, but one of my best friends is Mike Silva. Um, he's an associate head coach at Louisiana Tech, and he's actually married to Reagan Silva, Reagan Page. And um, Mike Hargrove was actually his goddaughter, or her goddaughter and stuff. So uh, I don't ever hear from him. I wish I did. He can call me anytime. I'd love to take any advice from him. <laughs> I promise you that. All right. You have any more questions for Coach Vanderberg? Had a yeah, good discussion here. Go ahead, Lee. Lee Passmore. Okay. Um, I, this is maybe a follow up to the, the recruiting question we guys had. You know, you you were thinking about the needs you had with all those seniors you had to replace, and now you know a lot of those guys are going to come back with the extra year of eligibility. Um, there's a piece that ran, we ran about um, college baseball maybe having more depth in general because of that this next year. You kind of see that maybe could it be a blessing and a curse maybe having a numbers crunch next year as far as getting guys on the roster, you know, as, you know, as you having to redshirt a lot more than you maybe figured you needed to do, do before that. 
Uh, no doubt it's going to, and you're going to see that all across uh, Division One, especially Division Two. Uh, you'll see that some, especially a team like us that had a lot of seniors. If you didn't have a lot of seniors, uh, you know, if you had the normal three or four, it won't affect you too much. But with 16, yeah, it's it's, it's going to affect us. We talked about that um, as a coaching staff. I think there'll be some big time positives out of that. You'll see some really deep teams. Uh, some loaded teams all across. I mean, as good as we think we're going to be next year. I mean, I've talked with the coaches at Angelo. Uh, they had a really senior-heavy team as well. Most of their guys are coming back. Um, and then, you know, you fill in. Again, it's just like what I said. I mean, we knew what our strengths and weaknesses were, so we can go out and, uh, you know, replace guys. Not replace guys, but uh, find other guys that can come in and, and fill our weaknesses. And so we expect to be hopefully really good next year. And I think you're going to see that all across uh, all the divisions. And But I do think the, some of the pauses with that is the red shirt years, you know, I mean, some of those freshmen coming in. I, I mean, I tell everybody I, I was an arrogant freshman uh, at Northwestern Oklahoma, and Coach Pulp actually wanted the red shirt in his first year. And I kind of said, man, I don't want the red shirt. I'm going to go junior college if that ends up happening. And um, he ended up uh, – let me get a uniform. I end up starting most of the year as a freshman, but I wish more than anything. Um, I tell guys that I redshirt, that was the biggest mistake in my playing career is telling him, you know, that I didn't want a redshirt. I, I think the redshirt year, I mean, you see it with guys like uh, Darius Carter this year. I mean, Dom here goes another perfect example. That redshirt year can be so beneficial uh, for these young student athletes coming in from high school. I mean, 18-year-old kid playing against 23-year-olds. I mean, just the strength difference, all that kind of stuff. I mean, Coach Ramey uh, with us here, we're very fortunate to have one of the best strength conditioning coaches across all of Division II, across all of, all divisions. She does a phenomenal job. Our guys get so much bigger and stronger uh, that redshirt year. So I think you'll be able to see that and be able to redshirt those guys uh, a lot more instead of just throwing them out in the fire that first year. You know, Coach, when you talk about returning 16 seniors next year again and adding in the red shirts that you had from this year, not just for the Buffaloes, but across college baseball in general, the, the talent level next year is going to be incredible. It really is. Uh, there's going to be a lot of talent, a lot of talent. And I think you'll see that. I mean, obviously, all the, the spring sports, I mean, even softball stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's just it's, it's going to be really deep. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, that's what you want. I mean, you don't want to go out and play against teams that, um, you know, you know that you're going to win walking onto the field. That's what's so great about the LSC is every weekend, I mean, it's a grind. I tell our guys, I don't care how good, and I thought we were really good this year. We've been really good the past few years, and every weekend, if you don't play your best, you're going to get beat. I mean, you look at uh, when we went down to Angelo this past, uh, you know, whatever, past month, uh, they're the number one team in the country, a really good club. They, they were unbeaten, and, uh, you know, we, we'd lose three out of four. Tough weekend for us, and I left the weekend thinking we should have swept. I mean, we had every game won. I think we lost, dropped uh, two games in the bottom of the ninth, and we had leads, and then one game they ended up coming back on us as well. So, it, you know, that, that's the way it is. I mean, that's what's great about the LSC. I love it. Um, I wouldn't have, wouldn't want it any other way. Any more questions for Coach Vandenberg? Gary? 13 seniors coming back, and how does that affect your scholarships? I know I've been reading things about how it's affecting everybody across all the spring sports particularly, so how does that affect scholarships and the seniors coming back and all that? Well, um, Division two, we're allowed nine full scholarships is what we're allowed. Um, it's still a little bit up in the air how we're going to do it here at WC, uh, but the NCAA has pretty much said that uh, the scholarships of your seniors will not count towards that uh, nine scholarships. Okay, so, but you got to look at dollars wise. I mean, that's a lot of money right there. Um, so, you know, we're still in talks with our administration, all that kind of stuff, to exactly see how that's going to go over here. But um, it, it could be a really good thing. I mean, obviously, uh, our administration is unbelievable here, and we're going to do what's best for these seniors. Dr. Bob, did you have a question? Yes. Um, Matt, do you have a – are you looking forward to the Yankees winning their 28th World Championship this year? Well, I don't believe that will happen. Um, 
you know, I'm an Astros fan. I know they're cheaters or whatever you guys want to call them, but uh, I, I don't think the Yankees are going to win it. They they rely solely on the long ball, and um, you know they need to get away from that, Doc Bob. Um, they need to get back to what they do best. And you know, I, I'm a true believer. I like old school baseball where uh, you you'll actually try to move a runner from second to third. Uh, with nobody out, maybe bunt every once in a while. I don't even know if the Yankees know how to bunt anymore. So I, I don't think they'll win it until they learn how to again. Uh, I think we'll win the 28th. Uh, you think so? Okay. I think the Astros are going to be fine to win it and, and prove everybody wrong. No, they probably lost their camera. Uh, maybe, maybe. But I'm sure the Yankees were doing the same thing there. Oh. They lost them out at some point in time. Anything else for Coach Vanderbury? If not, Coach, we appreciate you being with us this morning. And Buff Nation, we appreciate you joining us. Our next Coach's Zoom will be next Tuesday when we'll have Lady Buff basketball head coach Kristen Matteo join us. Matt Vanderberg, thanks for uh, spending the last 30 minutes with you. As we're going to say to every coach, it was uh, sad seeing the season come to a premature end, but uh, the insights you've given us not just from this year, but looking towards next year, baseball season can't get here quick enough. Absolutely. I really appreciate everybody coming on this morning. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.